I have a question about that. So you joined the Supremes in the 70s. Yes. And of course, they started having hit records around 1964. Yes. So around the 60s, mm-hmm. when you were aware of the Supremes, yes. did you ever think, I would love to be? Did you have that dream <laughs> or well, that fantasy uh, that you would end up being a Supreme? I don't know that I had it as a fantasy. You know, the thing about the Supremes, for me, growing up in New York, was there was someone for everyone. So you could be Diana, or you could be Florence, or you could be Mary, you know? Right. And we thought about it from time to time. Right. I mean, I've been in show business all my life. So, you know, it was, I don't know that I specifically thought about it, but I sure love it. I'm thinking maybe you were home <laughs> watching Ed Sullivan and you yes. thought, I'm going to be. <laughs> I'm going to be. Yeah. That's yeah. the tea. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And when you got the call, to be in the Supremes. Yes. Can you describe that? Of course. My mother, who was just the most unlikely woman, because she could come up with these impossible things, you see. And she was on the board of the, uh, the executive board of the NAACP, Beverly Hills. And Bob Jones was in charge of publicity at Motown, asked her if I would be interested. And of course, at that time, I was with Stevie Wonder, with Wonder Love. And we had written... I can't help it for off the wall, which wound up on off the wall, and helped to change popular music. That record, you know. But um, I'll never forget. She said, "You know, how would you like to be one of the Supremes?" And I thought, "Well, never done that before, and it sounds like fun, and it was very different from Wonder Love." You know, Stevie Wonder, of course, we all know and love. And he's he's just this genius, marvelous, prolific artist. I was lucky enough to write songs with and still still working on things with him, you know. But Wonder Love was the best band in the world, I swear. <laughs> they were just phenomenal musicians. So to go from where you had total freedom, because we wrote songs, I wrote Free there with Denise Williams while I was in Wonder Love. And later, when I actually got the call and said, you know, they were going to come and talk to me in a long, white... Mercedes limousine pulled up to Wonder Love rehearsal with blacked out windows, which had belonged to George Harrison, the Beatle. And I got in that car and left. (laughs) And the rest was history, you know. It was tremendous. It really was. That is great. Mm -hmm. Uh, You mentioned the song you wrote for Michael Jackson. Sure. Sure. When you wrote it, did you write it for Michael, or did you write it and then Michael got the song? Well, it was actually written for Songs in the Key of Life. Steve uh, talked about that a little bit when we did um, Spike Lee's film on Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson from Motown to Off the Wall. And he said he had written it for himself, you know. So I can remember when we wrote it. I can remember exactly, you know. He, he's, so, he's so prolific. I don't know another writer, maybe one you know, who writes all the time like that and of that quality. But he came to me with this, uh, da, 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 you know, and he kind of bounces and he mumbles through it and everything. And I, I promise you, words, the lyrics just came immediately. And that happens very rarely. But when it does, you know it's something special. And I feel it's God-given, you know, when that happens. So it was written for Stevie. When yes. you first heard Michael's version, oh. what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> but, see, he said that Renee Hardaway, his sister, knew Mike. She was very good friends with Michael. They had grown up, their families. And she suggested to him that he give it to Michael. And he, you know, he was kind of for a minute, but I like this song, you know. And, and I think he thought about it. And I was actually in, they had a remote studio that was just outside of his recording studio on Western. And um, Michael came in. I was in there alone listening to songs in the Kid Life. Michael came in and sat about as far from, maybe a little closer, where you are right now. And he was just the shyest guy. You know, we sat in there listening to that album for two hours. We said maybe four words. He said to me, <laughs> I remember he said, are you Miss Green's daughter? <laughs> and I'm like, Mom. Because my mom taught 
LaToya taught Janet, got Janet ready to record. And she would go to their house, and I'd go every once in a while, and they'd be hiding behind the door. And Michael was always hiding behind the door. So incredibly shy. And of course, the music was so loud and powerful, it wasn't very easy to speak. But it was a moment. You know, I've thought a thousand times of things I might have said and didn't. <laughs> But that's life, you know, it was wonderful. Just to be looking at you, couldn't believe, you know, it was such a tremendous album. And for, you know, for the chance to hear it before it was even out, oh, just died off. But when his came out, they were all, ah! excuse me for screaming. <laughs> I was just thrilled. Sure. It, was, it was the one sort of adult song, really, if you think about it, on that album. The others were kind of on the way there. It was his really defining his adulthood as a performer. And Off the Wall was slightly jazzy, and yet it had this strong, memorable hook, you know, and that's, that's the key. Oh, you know? great album. Mm -hmm. You were part mm -hmm. of it. Yes, indeed. I'm very proud of that. So, I don't mean to monopolize. No, no, no. no. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, um, but I do have a question before you mm -hmm. ask you next. Since we are here for the Raw Science Film Festival, I would just like to know, is there anything in particular that you'd like to take away from the film festival? Like yeah. earlier, Spencer said he came as a sponge to absorb anything that he'll be able to learn. Yes. Um, was there anything in particular that you had? Well, of course. This is my third year as a judge for the Raw Science Film Festival. Okay. And Kerry Kukral, who is just pure genius, who created the festival, absolutely. Just the most wonderful, focused young woman uh, invited me. I met her through the Google Lunar X Prize, mm -hmm. which was a $30 million competition right. for whoever could get to the moon privately funded, would get a moon, build and design a rover, put it on the moon, have it go 500 yards, and then shoot this film back to America and the world, you know, and, and, and from everywhere. Everyone that was involved, they were from around the world. So through them, because I, I was an advisor for Plan B, for Team Plan B, who were from Canada in the Google Lunar X Prize, they introduced me to Carrie, basically, and she asked me to become involved in the Raw Science Film Festival. And it's just the fen most phenomenal event. I, I'm just so proud of the young filmmakers, some, you know, of every age, really. But to see a, a place where they can, you know, share these films, which are innovative, mm -hmm. which are so creative, and to do it, you know, in, a, in this kind of a, an atmosphere, right, where they can be associated with astrophysicists and the science community, where they can meet cosmonauts and astronauts and just literally space scientists of such renown, Kip Thorne, who won the, uh, the Nobel Prize last year for gravitational waves. Oh my goodness. You know, to be in that rarefied atmosphere is tremendous, not just for the people in the, you know, in the event, but for everyone right. around the world. And, and Carrie started as a ballet dancer. And I mean, a, a brilliant, ballet dancer who decided at a certain point that she was going to go back to school and study engineering and work on things like heart valves and stuff. You know, she's brilliant. And to do that and realize the need for, let's say, a cohesion of science and art. Well, you know, I'm as happy as a, a clam. <laughs> I really am. It's, it's just a wonderful idea. And to know that next year, fingers crossed, you know, everybody's interested. The Oscars, Sundance, you know, it's, it's the kind of a thing that if you have an opportunity in our times, which are rife with wonderful innovations and technology, and to see the brilliance of what is coming out of the world, to see and to inspire young people, you know, there's nothing quite like that. I'm very, very proud of the Royal Science Film Festival. And, and just to be just to be around and see you know what's going on all these films which are on filmfreeway.com if you get a chance after the film festival to see them there some are one minute some are 10 some are half an hour some are full-length feature films and they're lauded in the way that this moment you know last year 
the Afghan robotics team, the girls' Afghan robotics team, came to America, won an award, and one of the young ladies lost her father because of it by the Taliban. You know, very serious. For them, you know, just to be able to go to school at all is a miracle. But because of them winning this, this robotics competition, which they made their robot from household goods. That's the kind of thing that lifts you up and inspires you beyond. And right. because they won, girls in Afghanistan now, can they're building a school for science for girls. You can't beat that. It makes me want to cry. You know, you can't beat it. You can. Girls around the world need the kind of support that something that is a public event and is a, a huge thing can inspire them to do something for their next generation. I love it. What can I, I say? I like that too. Oh. Especially for little girls in like in other countries yes. where education is not something girls are uh, have access to, right? That's so right. it's very it's very inspiring to hear that an event like this could cause sure. such a t sure. such change like that. Oh, it's fabulous. There's more coming. Uh, Carrie has some announcements to make. She'll be making. Oh, yes. yes. Exciting and inspiring mm -hmm. to hear you say that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so inspired. You know, I'm, I'm inspired by so many things. Life is so precious, and we live in such strange times. You know, I'm the national director for film, music, and the arts for the Peace Prize Foundation. And it is such an honor to, to be alive right now and see how we can make whatever is impossible or is perceived as impossible possible. We can do great things, humanity. And I honestly believe that if there is a great investment to be made in the world, it's in women. Because women, without women, what have you got? You know, you got nothing. <laughs> you got just men. <laughs> so, no offense. Are you ready for, you ready for a female president? Because I am. I, I, think, I think it can happen. Yeah. You know, I don't I know so. whom. Oh, I don't know whom. One. I think the next one will. Go. Well, we, I think we so. just, you know, we keep our fingers crossed and see if we can make it through this. Right, resident. year and a half. Yes. <laughs> We're looking forward to, in particular. Just actually, I would love to meet the founder of it because Suze was telling me about, yes. and and I think it's a fantastic idea. So. I actually can't wait to get more immersed in it right. and find out more. So next year when we're sitting here, <laughs> I can tell you more about what I thought, but <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited to learn. You what well, you'd like to do? I, I will give one shout out. I have a new book out. Okay. And it's a history of a group that Suze knows well, and of course Sydney knows this group. Uh, it's a 50-year history of the Jackson Five. Wow. It's called wow. the Jackson's Legacy. And if okay. you're a fan of the group, this was done with the family, you know, with oh. uh, the brothers, with Jackie and mm -hmm. Tito and Marlon. Right. It's their book, and I was brought in to write it. So if you love the Jacksons, I and think you love the And where can we find this book? Well, it's on Amazon and okay. probably bookstores. Are book they going to be in the bookstores? Yeah. Okay. They are. They are in All right. Bookstores. That's fantastic. Wow. That's fantastic. I'm in the midst of people who are awesome. <laughs> That's an awesome meeting with you. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. Hopefully you guys have Thank a wonderful you. time. As I seem, it does happen to be an awesome time every time. So, um, again, thank you so much for joining us on the Wish Bus. Thank you. Thank and you, Thanks for having us. <laughs> You're very welcome. Can I, can I just say one thing? You know, we try to be very conscious of our all of our people online, yes. and you can find me on Twitter, mm -hmm. Suse, at Suse, S-U-S-A-Y-E, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, and I love to meet people, I love to talk to people, and it has made it possible, really, to reach the world, you know, so we're right. very happy about that. And thanks for having us, we really appreciate it. No, thank you for joining This is Raw Science Film Festival for number five. Science. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of humans first setting foot on the moon. Well, for me, the key point to a film like uh, Interstellar 
is that they inspire people, particularly young people, about science. And I think that's the principal goal in my mind, is inspiration. Literacy in, a, in our country, in the world, in terms of science and technology, I think has been on the wane, uh, unfortunately. Uh, there's a lot of efforts moving ahead, STEM effort and the STEAM effort. My name is Charles Riley, also known as Lil Buck. And, and uh, how did you end up at the Raw Science Film Festival? Oh, well, I defy gravity with my moves, so. Nice. So you're a dancer. <laughs> I'm a dancer, yes. I'm a dancer movement artist. Well, I'm a big believer in science and technology in general. So a film festival that celebrates these type of work, I think, is essential for us to advance our body of knowledge, because that's what science is. It's trying to probe into the dark and figure out what's there. We don't just sit in our valley. We climb over the mountain and go and see what's on the other side. The festival is run by an amazing woman called Kerry Kukrell. Possibly the only time that a ballerina has become a research scientist. The ultimate goal that we seek is to keep science elevated at the highest platforms in our culture. One of those highest platforms is the Academy Awards. We are here now and we're going to elevate science in our culture on that platform. <laughs> Thank you. Find us on social media. All right, thank you. See ya.